All right, this lesson is a review of our circles unit. Put your pencils down, please, as always. Watch and learn, and then go back and make sure you can do these problems by yourself. Don't copy off of me. Put your pencils away. Seriously, people. All right, problem number one. Um, to solve an equation like this, which has nothing to do with circles, but uh, nevertheless, it will be on the test. Um, remember, we have to add these exponents. The common mistake I saw before was that students would make this uh, base disappear. The base is not disappearing, people. Um, so if I add these up, that's going to be 5x uh, plus 4 is equal to 3. Now, it's time to uh, change to the other form. So this is exponent form, so I'm going to switch to log form. So this will be log base 4. All right, I always start with the base. And these other two parts are going to switch sides. OK, so the 3 is going to come over here. And the 5x plus 4 is going to go over there. Now eventually we'll have to do log 3 over log 4. This will be a decimal. But for now we're going to subtract 4 and divide by 5. Like so. Subtract 4. Okay, so so far that gives us log base 4 of 3 minus 4 is equal to 5x. Then it's time to divide by 5. Make sure you divide everything by 5. Okay, so that is going to give us, because uh, those cancel out, this is going to give us the answer. Um, but we'll have to do change of base on this part to get it in the calculator. So we're going to have log 3 over log 4. Okay, that's this little part right here. We still got that minus 4 hanging around. And then this entire thing is over 5. Okay, and that should equal x. So it's just a matter of putting that into the, your handy dandy calculator. Like you do. Whoa, where'd it go? Oh, there it is. Uh, I can see it well enough. All right, so let's do this. Fraction mode. In the denominator, all we see is 5. So there it is. In the numerator, we have a fraction. So let's put a fraction up there. So this will be log 3 up there. And down here, I'm going to have log 4. OK, don't forget about that minus 4 out there. And kabam. So that is negative 0.64. All right, and that is how you do number one. Now, if the circle given here is translated four units up, and five units to the left. What is the equation of the resulting circle? Well, here, here would be my strategy for you. Um, think about the center. You know how to find the center of a circle. You guys have gotten really good at that. Um, so what would be the center of this uh, circle? OK. So the center of the circle right now is a negative 5, comma, 2, right? All right, it, everything is the opposite of what's going on in there. Now, um, if I'm going to translate uh, 4 units up, well, as far as this center goes, if I'm going to move this up uh, 4 units, I'm going to take this y value and I'm going to add 4 to it. That'll move the center up 4. If I want to use move 5 units to the left, 
I'm going to take the center value and uh, subtract 5 from it. So I'm going to do uh, minus 5. So that's going to give me a new center. OK, so my new center will be negative 10, OK, because negative 5 minus 5, <clears throat> comma 6. All right, because 2 plus 4. So that's the key. Now that I've got my new center, I would make the new equation. New equation. Oh, yes. So my new equation will be uh, x plus 10 squared plus y minus 6 squared. Again, I'm just doing the opposite of these again to get me back to here, equals. Now, uh, a translation, we're just shifting the circle around. We're not making it bigger or smaller. So the radius should still be the same. So this 13, which is the, the radius squared, that's not going to change. So boom, there's your new equation. You're welcome. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. All right, moving on to number three. Given the following system of equations, find the solutions, graph optional. Um, okay, let's go. So basically, uh, look, you have if if you can find this algebraically, great. Um, but if you can find it uh, graphically, I'll take that as well. I'll take either way. So here's how you do it algebraically. First of all, um, both of these equations need to be in general form, which they are almost in general form. They don't have any parentheses or anything, but they need to be set equal to 0. So just understand that I would have to subtract 15 from both sides, OK? And that's going to make 0 over here. And on this one, I would have to subtract 5 from both sides, minus 5. And that's going to make 0. So this is the form that it needs to be in. Uh, I'm not going to recopy the whole thing. Um, now, once they're both in general form equal to 0, if they're both equal to 0, they should be equal to each other. Feel me? OK. So I'm just going to set these equal to each other. So what I have here is I've got uh, x squared plus y squared plus 6x minus 2y minus 15, right? Just moved it over, equals. Now here comes the second equation, x squared plus y squared minus 4x plus 8y minus 5. So if I simplify this down, it should boil down to the equation of a line. Let's find that out. So I will subtract x squared from both sides. OK, they cancel out. I'm going to subtract y squared from both sides. So they cancel out. OK, I am going to um, subtract 8y from both sides. See, I'm shooting for y equals mx plus b. That's what I'm looking for here. Um, so I'm going to get my y's over there. So I'm subtracting 8y from both sides. So that's gone. I'm going to go ahead and recopy now, see what I've got so far. So, so far I've got 6x uh, minus 10y minus 15 equals negative 4x minus 5. That's what I have so far. OK, um, now I'm shooting for y equals mx plus b. So I want my x's over there. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 6x from both sides. OK, so that gives me negative 10. Well, you know what? Let me go ahead and do the constant also. Let's add 15 to both sides as well. So those will cancel out, and this will cancel out. So I will have negative 10y equals negative 10x plus 10. That's a lot of tens. Uh, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to divide everything by negative 10. 
negative 10 here, negative 10 here, and negative 10 here. All right, what does that give me? Um, so that's going to give me the equation y equals x minus 1. OK, so there's a linear equation. All right, um, now what you do is you take this and you plug it in to one of the original equations. Um, I like the one on the bottom, so I'm just going to use that one. OK, so that bottom equation, I'm just going to recopy it. All right, that bottom equation was right here. And uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to take x minus 1. And uh, we're going to plug it in for the y's, because y equals this. So I'm going to plug it in right here. And I'm going to plug it in right here. So that's going to give me uh, x squared plus and then x minus 1 squared minus 4x plus 8 times another x minus 1 minus 5 equals 0. Now, remember that x minus 1 squared, I can't just square the two parts. I need to write that twice. So I will have x squared plus x minus 1 times x minus 1 minus 4x. Um, I might as well distribute this now. So that's going to be plus 8x minus 8 minus 5 equals 0. OK, um, I will double distribute this. So that's going to give me x squared plus. OK, now here comes this part. Let me change colors to emphasize that I'm doing my double distributive property now x times x is x squared. All right, x times negative 1 is negative x. Another negative x, so that's negative 2x. And then one negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. So there's my double distributive property. And then I have the rest of this, but I'm going to combine a little bit as long as I'm here. Negative 4x plus 8, that is positive 4x. OK, and uh, negative 8 minus 5 is negative 13. So I've got that so far. All right, well, x squared plus x squared, that's 2x squared. And uh, negative 2x and a positive 4x, that makes positive 2x. And a uh, positive 1 and a negative 13, that makes negative 12. equals 0. Now you're probably noticing the GCF, the uh, greatest common factor here is 2. Because it's an equation, I can simply divide by the common factor. So I'm just going to divide everything by 2, make my life simpler. Why not? Life is complicated enough. So that's x squared plus x minus 6 equals 0. And you factor. So this is going to factor as x. Um, well, OK, x and x for sure. Then we see the 6. It could be uh, either 2 times 3 or 5 times 1. OK, it's either 2 times 3 or, uh, did I say 5 times 1? I meant 1 times 6. Yeah, so clearly this is a uh, 2 times 3 situation. So um, let's do the 2 times 3. All right, we need a positive 1 middle. So we will let the 2 be negative and the 3 be positive. That way, inner, we have negative 2x. Outer, we have positive 3x. That makes positive 1 middle. OK. And negative 2 times positive 3 is negative 6, so it's all good. So to break this down into the actual solutions, we have to set these equal to 0. So x minus 2 equals 0, x plus 3 equals 0. Adding 2 gives us x equals 2 as a solution. And subtracting 3 gives us x equals negative 3. 
Now, we, we don't want just the x values, all right? We need the y values as well. So I like to think of it as a table, all right, of which so far we have these x values. We have negative 3 and we have 2. Um, but we need the y values that go with them. And uh, so what you can do is use the linear equation that we found at the beginning. Okay, um, use this. Okay, y equals x minus 1. I'm just going to write this down over here. y equals x minus 1. So focus on that for a minute. So that means in this case, y is going to equal negative 3 minus 1. All right, because that's x. Um, and of course, that equals uh, negative 4. I guess I can just put it here. And in this case, this means y equals 2 minus 1. And that's just 1. OK, so that is super easy. So that's it. Um, these are the solutions. And I think that is the easiest way uh, to do this, this problem. Um, we should probably go ahead and write those solutions as ordered pairs, though. Did they give us a line to write these on? Uh, negative 3, negative 4, 2, 1. There was no line. So, boom, this is the solution. Now, if you wanted to do this by graphing, you would have to uh, complete the square and all that. Um, I don't have time to do that right now. So, you're on your own with the graphing. Um, you know, on another problem later uh, on this assignment, I'm going to show you how to convert from general form to standard form, and uh, then you could graph it from there and see where they meet An another time, perhaps. In the meantime, let's look at number four. Given this equation, write in standard form. Oh, well, here we go. This is where I teach you about rewriting it in standard form with the parentheses and all and then you could graph it if you wanted to did I give you a graph no we don't need to um, anyway that's where the completing the square comes in so uh, take a look at this you have to make sure the X values and the Y terms are sort of grouped together you need to have the constant away from here so it would be good to subtract three from both sides like that so um, let's get going so I'm gonna have x squared plus 12x leave a gap and then plus y squared minus 8y leave a gap is equal to negative 3 okay and then we ask ourselves well what's the magic number that completes the square and that's half of the middle squared so half of this is 6 square it that's 36 please make sure you add it to the other side of the equation too this is what students forget most often and then here again um, half of 8 is 4 4 squared is 16 so plus 16 Make sure you do it to both sides of the equation. So, so what, my friend? Um, now that uh, we completed the square with the magic number, these should both factor as the same thing twice. Okay, meanwhile, this adds up to 49. Um, see, this is going to be x plus 6 twice very nice and this will be y minus see the minus sign my y minus four twice all right the middle term tells you the signs because that last thing the pink thing that's always positive because we squared something um the the point of this is so we could write x plus six squared and y minus four squared is equal to 49. And that is how you write the uh, standard form equation of a circle.
6 minus 4 equals 49. All right, so that's x plus 6 squared plus y minus 4 squared is equal to 49. Of course, that means that the radius is 7. It's the square root of that. And the center is the opposite of these. So the center will be negative 6 comma positive 4. All right, so you can see how easily we could, we could graph this now. And so if we did the same thing on the previous problem, if we did this process twice, all right, we could come up with two equations in standard form uh, where we'd know the radius and the center. And then we could graph those two circles and uh, see wherever they met uh, should be the solutions. Okay, so, but that's optional. And right now I'm going to opt not to do that. The reason why is 12.34 a.m. And I get up at 5 a.m., which is why I sound like a talking frog. Um, yeah. So, gotta draw the line somewhere, people. Let's see, write the equation of the line tangent to the circle, um, that circle, at this point. All right, better zoom out a bit. All right, let's, let's see what's up with this. So, we need the equation of the line tangent to this circle at this point. Well, um, it would be helpful to have some sort of a diagram, okay? Um, <clears throat> even though we don't have a graph per se, I'm just going to sketch one. Um, let's see. First of all, the center. If this is my circle equation, that means it has a center at um, negative 4, comma 3. All right, that's the center. Okay. Um, so let's graph that. I'm just doing a really quick sketch over here. Okay, so somewhere over in there is the center of the circle. Um, the square root of 13 all right, is about 3.5. So, all right, and this is over 4. So 3.5 is going to be like in this area. Okay. So it's this kind of thing going on. Anyway, um, the point of tangency is supposed to be the point negative 1, comma, 5. All right, so negative 1, comma, 5. So let's say that's this. So this is the point negative 1, comma, 5. Okay, so we're supposed to have a line that is tangent to the circle at that point. So this is what we have to do. We have to start with, oh, by the way, so the center was negative 4, comma, 3. All right, I think I need more lead. OK, so these are the steps. First, we need the slope of the radius. All right, slope of radius. Okay, the slope of the radius. So here's the radius right here. Um, to find the slope, we have to do y minus y over x minus x. All right, that's how you find the slope when you have points like this. So that would be like 5 minus 3. Okay, that's y minus y. So 5 minus 3. All right, my pen is not working today. Um, and then it's going to be negative 1 minus negative 4. Okay. Um, so, 
5 minus 3 is 2. And uh, negative 1 minus negative 4, that's like negative 1 plus 4, so that's 3. So this is the slope of the radius. Okay, now um, next we need the slope of the tangent line. Now, the slope of the tangent line is uh, always going to be opposite and reciprocal to the radius because they're perpendicular. So the slope of the tangent line is just going to be um, negative 3 over 2. All right? It's just opposite and reciprocal to the radius slope. All right? So this is the slope we really wanted, the slope of the tangent line. All right? Um, we're supposed to be finding the equation of a line. The equation of a line is like y equals mx plus b, right? So far we have, have m, because uh, those are really the two things we need. We need m and we need b. So we found m, so we're halfway there. All we need to do now is find b. So that's the next step. So let's find b. Now, looking at y equals mx plus b, um, well, they gave us a point on the line, negative 1, comma 5. So uh, this negative 1 is our x, and this 5 is our y, all right? Because it's always x, y, right? So if I plug those in where they go, that's going to give me um, 5 equals. Now, the m we just found that the slope. So that's negative 3 over 2. And then the x is negative 1 plus b. Okay, so I should be able to find b pretty easily. Let me zoom in a little. Okay, so this is going to give me 5 equals positive 3 over 2 plus b, right? Negative times negative is positive. So then I just subtract 3 over 2 from both sides. So these cancel out. Now you have your TI-30, guys. Um, so just do 5 minus 3 over 2. That's 7 over 2. Okay, uh, so that's B. So B is 7 over 2. Okay, so look, we have the two things we needed. We needed M and we needed B. Now we have them both. So now it's time for the last step, which is to write the equation. Okay, so we're going to take both of these things and put them into the equation. So our y equals mx plus b becomes y equals negative 3 over 2x plus 7 over 2. All right, so that is the equation of the uh, tangent line. Okay, so to review... First, we found the slope of the radius using our little slope formula, y minus y over x minus x, right, between the two points. So we found the radius slope. We did opposite and reciprocal to get the slope of the tangent. Um, we used the slope and the point they gave us, negative 1, 5, in order to find b. And then we just wrote the equation. OK, that was number five. All right, how about number six? Write the equation in standard form for this circle. Well, look at the center. Um, you'll notice that the center 
is at uh, 2 comma negative 1. So if we do the opposite of these to help us build the equation, then it will be x minus 2 squared plus and then y plus 1 squared, all right, opposite of that. Now all we need is the radius squared right here. Um, well, the radius, you can just count in any direction, all right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Well, I went off camera. Sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So the radius is 8. Don't put 8 here. Uh, put 64, okay, because this has to be the radius squared. Um, well, that's it. That's all there was to that. Um, muy facil. All right, we're in the home stretch here, people. Um, number seven. Given the following system of equations, find the solutions. The graph, again, is optional, so I probably won't do it. Um, because it's 12.45 a.m., so... I love you guys, but I gotta get at least a couple hours of sleep tonight. So, what's up? Well, um, it's important that this equation is in standard form, which it almost is in standard form. I would just subtract that 16 from both sides, okay, like this, so now I've got zero over there. All right. Um, now, this line equation, we need kind of y by itself. So I would subtract x from both sides. So that's going to give me y equals negative x plus 8. OK? So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to take this, and I'm going to plug it in for the y's. OK, so this has got to go here and it has to go here. I'm going to plug it in for these two y's. So watch what happens. So I'll have x squared plus 4x plus, now here comes y squared, but instead of putting y squared, I will have negative x plus 8 squared. And then I have minus 8y, but again, instead of putting y, I'm going to put that negative x plus 8. I'm substituting for y like this. And then I have my minus 16 equals 0 that I did at the beginning. So notice I have only x's. So I should be able to solve this for x. So let's see what happens. Um, so I'm going to have x squared plus 4x plus, all right, this part has to be written twice, all right, negative x plus 8 two times. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do this distribu distributive property. Please understand I am distributing a negative 8. Uh, a common mistake would be to just multiply everything by 8 and leave this a positive 64. That's wrong. So I'm going to have plus 8x minus 64. Alert. That's a common mistake. The negative goes with the 8. And then I have minus 16 equals 0. OK, kabam. So um, I need to uh, double distribute in this area right here. OK, so that's going to give me x squared plus 4x. Now, OK, let me do this in, in pink. So. Negative times negative is a positive, so that'll be positive x squared. All right, negative x times 8 is a negative 8x. And then the same thing happens again in here, another negative 8x. So that's negative 16x. All right, and then 8 times 8 is 64, so plus 64. And then the rest of it I just bring down. So I have plus 8x. Now I might as well put these together, 64 minus 16, wait, it's not 64 minus 16, it's negative 64 minus 16, so it's really, it's like we're adding, but look, some of you are really bad at arithmetic, so 
you probably should be reaching for a calculator just to be sure all right so you would do something like this negative 64 minus 16 otherwise right here is where a, a ton of you would have made a mistake so that's negative 80 so uh, that's our negative 80 is equal to 0 so combining like terms so x squared plus x squared um, so that's going to be 2x squared and then uh, what do we have here so we have 4x and negative 16x and 8x okay well 8 plus 4 is 12 and then 12 minus 16 is negative 4 so the net result of all that is negative 4x okay and then we have the constant so 64 minus 80 gives us negative 16 equals 0 alright see I just put those together alright so um, I just need to finish solving this I'm noticing a common factor happening here so I would divide everything by 2 I can do this and get rid of the 2 because it is an equation so I'm gonna have x squared minus 2x minus 8 equals 0 and now I gotta factor this okay um, now 8 that's either 2 times 4 or 1 times 8 what do you think it's gonna be yeah I also think it's gonna be 2 times 4 now I need a negative 2 inner so um, that means I need a positive 2 here and a negative 4 there because that would give us an inner of positive 2x an outer of negative 4x together that makes negative 2 also positive 2 times negative 4 does make negative 8 great so um, that's all equal to 0 to finish it off I need to set these equal to 0 so I have x plus 2 equals 0 and x minus 4 equals 0 subtracting 2 gives me x equals negative 2 adding 4 gives me x equals 4 alright but we're not done because we need the y values that go with them um, I encourage you to think of this as a table of values where um, we have the 2x value so far we've got negative 2 and we've got 4 but we still need the y values that go with them to find the y values we will use the linear equation from before we will use this linear equation right here okay the one that says y equals negative x plus 8 so in this case that means that y is equal to negative negative 2 plus 8 alright I'm just plugging in the negative 2 alright but that means positive 2 plus 8 negative negative 2 is positive 2 and that is 10 and then this one means y equals negative 4 plus 8 okay and negative 4 plus 8 is just positive 4 so we have that um, if you are really bad at arithmetic and uh, if there's a chance you would have done this wrong especially the minus negative 2 or maybe even with the minus 4 plus 8 if you're bad with arithmetic then um, an option for you is using the table function on the calculator okay most of you should not need this but I feel like I should show it to you anyway uh, the linear equation was y equals negative x plus 8 so you could type that in negative x plus 8 
OK. Notice how I, I have this in Ask X mode. Uh, I recommend that. All right, the Ask X mode allows us to type in whatever value we want. Uh, so that works even if it's decimals. That's why it's good for this type of thing. Anyway, if I want to know what's going on at negative 2, I just type it in. And see, there's the 10 that we got before. If I want to know what's happening at 4, I just type it in. Boom, 4 comma 4. Okay, so that's another option for my poor arithmetic kits. All right, um, that's it. Well, let's write these as ordered pairs. Okay, so as ordered pairs, we've got negative 2 comma 10 and 4 comma 4. All right, these are the solutions. Okay, and uh, we could have graphed them. We could have graphed the equation y equals negative x plus 8 by going up to 8 and then going like down 1 over 1. And I could have graphed this circle by completing the square, doing the magic number and all that, and turning it into standard form with the radius showing. And then I could have graphed that and seen where they met, but um, it is 12.57 a.m. So I do not have time. Let's move on. OK, given the circle with a diameter that has these endpoints, um, write the equation of the circle in standard form. Diameter. Um, so just a generalized sketch of what's going on here. Um, so imagine some kind of circle. All right, please understand that the diameter is that uh, cord that goes right through the middle of the circle from one side to the other. So imagine that this is the point 7 comma 13, and this is the point negative 3 comma 1. So this whole blue segment would be the uh, diameter. Um, so bottom line is uh, we will use the distance formula to find this diameter. And then we'll take half of it, and that'll be the radius. So the diameter should equal, and I'm just going to use the distance formula. And this is the distance formula. It's like x minus x squared plus y minus y squared, right? Square root of it all. So that's like 7 minus negative 3 squared plus 13 minus 1 squared. Now you could do this step by step, um, but if you're bad at arithmetic, you could just put it all in your calculator. like this 7 minus negative 3 squared plus 13 minus 1 squared okay that comes out to be 2 radical 61 so that's the diameter okay is 2 radical 61 why did I put 66 while saying 61 I don't know that's the diameter. That means the radius is going to be half of this. So the radius is going to be just radical 61. OK, obviously I'm getting that by dividing by 2 for the radius. So there's the radius. Um, now, uh, for the equation, we need the radius squared. So the radius squared will just be 61. All right, because if you had squared both sides, the squaring cancels out the radical, you just get 61. So that lets us know that in the final answer, we're going to have a 61 at the end, radius squared, 61. Now, uh, to get the rest of it, you know, the part that goes in here, uh, we need the center. All right, we've got our x and y, but we need to know what the center is. Um, 
to find the center, we're going to find the midpoint. Okay, the midpoint is the center, um, obviously, because it will be halfway between these two endpoints. And the midpoint is just the average of the x's and the average of the y's. So that means we add them up and divide by 2. All right, so for example, if I do 7 plus negative 3 divided by 2, that's the average of the x's. And if I do 13 plus 1 divided by 2, then that is the average of the y's. Well, um, let's see. 7 plus negative 3 is 4. 13 plus 1 is 14. Okay, so that means that the center is going to be 2 comma 7. Okay, which means when we write the equation, we're going to have x minus 2 squared and y minus 7 squared is equal to our 61. Um, so there it is. That's how you write the equation in standard form. All right. Use the distance formula to find the diameter. Cut it in half to make uh, your radius. Don't forget to square it uh, because your equation needs radius squared. Don't, don't leave it a radical 61. And then use the midpoint formula um, to find the center. Average of the x's, average of the y's. OK, enough talk. We're finally down to the last problem. All right, and it's only 1.03 AM. Yay. Oh, but this is an easy one. Identify the center and the radius and graph it. All right, well, the center is going to be opposite of these. So negative 5 comma positive 1. The radius is going to be the square root of that. So the radius is 6. Now graph the circle. So uh, I'm going to use the center and the radius there. So um, this with the center of negative 5 comma 1. So here's my center. And now I'll use my radius by going 6 in all directions. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Don't be alarmed if you go off the graph when you're graphing these. That, that happens often. So as long as your center's on the graph, you'll be able to graph enough points to get the gist. And then you go from there. Okay, and there, so you graphed it. All right, I hope this lesson has been helpful. Um, I forgot to say, put down your pencil a hundred times like I normally like to. Uh, if you were copying off me half the time, you now have a false sense of knowing what you're doing, and you really don't. So I will provide the blank document, so make sure you, you should print it out again and redo it um, otherwise you will not know what you're doing okay it's 105 a.m. gotta go to bed good night